want to welcome you to my story. This is Cheryl Lynn Daves, and I'm so happy to have her here. Cheryl Lynn came upon Valley Christian Assembly in July of 2021. So Cheryl Lynn, I want to know your story on how, how you came to Valley Christian Assembly. Well, I would drive by the church. My husband and I were looking for a church, and we went to some that just wasn't a fit for us. And I'd be driving by this church, and it was like it was calling my name. Come here, come, you need to be here. So I'd tell Tom, I found it. I found our perfect church. So I'd get ready on Sunday, hoping he was getting ready, and then he'd say, babe, I'm sorry, I can't. Mm -hmm. Do you mind? And I'd say, that's okay, next week. Well, he next weeked himself until he passed away on May 17th of 21. Mm -hmm. And the 4th of July happens to be our wedding anniversary. And I was very happy that that first one after he passed was a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And this church that had been calling my name was open. And I walked in, and there wasn't many people because still COVID. COVID, yes. So I was greeted by Lexi and Brianna, uh -huh. and what a greeting that was. And they're just their arms and their words, and they went and got pastor and their prayers. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I felt right then, yeah, this is my home. Isn't that something that as she's driving by, maybe it was weeks or months or a year? Uh, probably a year. She kept like, when she'd go by, she'd be drawn to look over and drawn here and wanting to come. And her husband um, just wasn't ready, apparently, to he come. He was just to, sick. He couldn't. Yeah. yeah. So um, when he passed, and that first uh, anniversary was a Sunday during COVID, and she said, that's where I'm going to go, and she came. And while you were here, I know you were um, going through a lot of overwhelming circumstances, and because of the overwhelming circumstances, you were seeking more of God and you were learning about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Can you tell me a little bit about that seeking and, and, and about the Holy Spirit? Well, we had um, at the women's retreat the year before, we had you were t trying to teach us about the Holy Spirit and I was praying and praying. I didn't get it that year. Mm -hmm. But I prayed and I prayed. Several people at church prayed with me to get it. Well, this past year, Velma and Lila, Lila, yeah. Velma and Lila were praying with me, and and Lila or Velma kept saying, "You got it, girl. You got it. Just open your mouth. It's there. It will come <laughs> out." I opened my mouth, didn't understand or recognize right. anything that was coming out, and I said, "I got it." Got it. Velma kept and they're hugging me, saying, "You got it, girl. You got, got it." it. <laughs> a little encouragement there, a little bit of encouragement. And, um, you know, it, that's really close to my heart every year. I, I do it redundantly. I mean, every single year at retreat, I try to bring and teach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues because I believe it's so important in our life. It encourages us, and we're allowed to pray for people who we don't know what to pray anymore. And we're going to hear a little bit more from Cheryl Lynn about, she didn't, you know, how do you pray for people who are really sick and going through so much and, and they're close and you love them and you don't know what to say, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that prayer language allows you to pray in the Spirit and the Spirit knows the mind of man and the mind of God. And every year there's an opportunity, there's an opportunity every day of the week uh, to, you know, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but especially there we try to present the scriptures and we try to present an, an opportunity to be baptized in the Holy Spirit is so important. Don't you believe that that's important? Yeah, I do believe it's As important. It helped you through these um, overwhelming circumstances? Yes, when I don't know what to say, I, it, I just talk. That's right. It just comes. And, and share, share, share one of these or, or some of these overwhelming circumstances that you've been able to not become depressed or anxious, but that you continue in your prayer language to keep you rising above all that's pushing you down. Well, um, as my brothers and sisters of this church know, my sister's been in the hospital since July 28th of last year. And several times we've been told she wasn't going to make it. She's had sepsis seven times. Wow. The average person doesn't survive one. Yeah. And she has survived seven. They put her on a ventilator because, and they told us, 
this was going to be forever and we would never ever hear her voice again ever mm -hmm. wow and I'm with my sister and my nephew and he was for sure his mom was going to go that day we all gathered because yeah, if they I take her that. off the vent she will die mm -hmm. the doctor said if this comes out she will die then she, they asked if she wanted the vent to stay, and she said yes. And I said, baby sister, are you hearing what the man is saying? This is going to be your life for the rest of your life, forever. Mm -hmm. And she says, very stern, I'm the oldest, but yet she gets stern, very stern faced and said, I looked at my aunt and my nephew and I said, I can't argue with that. Wow. I cannot argue with that. So they left the vent in. They transferred her back to Desert Hospital. They did a tracheostomy because the vent couldn't stay down your throat forever. It has to have a different vent venue. So they put it in her throat. They sent her to a long-term care facility in Ontario who said, this girl is breathing on her own. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's breathing on yes. her own. Okay, so they take it off. She's breathing on her own. Amazing. They um, put a squawk box on, and when they put the squawk box on, you expect it's going to be kind of robotic, huh. the voice. Well, they came to take it off and she says, I haven't talked to my sister yet. So she calls me on the phone and I, I'm sitting in my car and I see Julie McLean come up on my car and I went, oh no, oh no. <laughs> and I pushed the button and she says, hi, baby. hi, sissy. And I said, hi. <laughs> and it was her exact voice. Uh -huh. Her voice was coming out of her mouth, just the way it always did. Yeah. And I'm trying really hard on the phone not to get too emotional and cry. Just wanted to celebrate with her. I said, they said you wouldn't sound like you again. And she goes, everybody's telling me that. I said, Julie, you sound just like my baby sister. Oh. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I think it was two weeks later, they removed the trach. They sent her to a hospital in Upland, and it was healing, and it's gone. And they found a hole in her colon, and they had scheduled her for surgery, but her vitals and everything were deteriorating because of the infection from mm -hmm. the colon. So they have her back at that long-term care facility, waiting to get her back to Upland, but today, today, <laughs> I didn't want to talk to her today because I didn't want to cry here. <laughs> but today she calls me on the phone and she goes, guess what I'm doing? I'm in a chair. Yeah. You're what? I've been sitting in this chair for a half an hour. Amen. Yeah. I said, oh my God. <laughs> and she said, yesterday I only made it 15 minutes and then my heart rate went up. I said, whoa, okay, but are you okay? And she goes, they said it was I was too excited <laughs> and I said I guess <laughs> so now her feet her feet are, are she describes it as being in the position of a ballerina uh -huh. permanently you know yeah but her feet are curved and she's trying really hard to get her feet desensitized uh -huh. because they hurt so she can't stand mm -hmm. so we've been pray we prayed on the phone that God would help desensitize those feet mm -hmm. and that the next time I talk to her on the phone she'll be standing up beside her bed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God has done so many amazing things. Seven times septus and each way the doctor said she will not live. She will die and yet she's still alive. But she knows if she dies that she's God's child. So and she's excited about the future because of God. And you're excited because yeah. you can pray for her. Even though we still have a little nervousness, we can pray. Oh, yeah. So we pray that you will join us 
Please. for Sherilyn's sister, her name is Julie, that her feet would be strengthened and the pain would be gone and that she could stand and that God would continue these miracles all along the way and that she would be able to come home. Praise God, she can talk and sound like herself. These things are important to us as humans, you oh, know, yeah. to our emotions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and because she had the baptism of the Holy Spirit and could pray in her prayer language, she could be an encouragement to Julie. She wasn't so discouraged and so down and so disappointed that she would go in there with such heaviness that would bring everything down. But Sherilyn, that Holy Spirit, it lifts you up. Oh, yeah. It brings you, when you go into that, she can sense that you have a strength. Right. And it's good for her. And it's right. good for you. My son said something to me yesterday that about prayer. Mm -hmm. He's not so sure how prayer gets answered. But he believes that prayer makes the other person feel good. Mm -hmm. And in that feeling good helps lift them up. That's good. And good insight. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. Well, yeah, because you know when somebody comes into your room and they're all downtrodden and crying and have a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety compared to somebody who comes in and has some kind of inner strength. Circumstances are all the same, but you have an inner strength and you're praying and you have hope. And that's what you've been doing. Yeah. And she's been estranged from her grandchildren. Mm -hmm. There was a little argument thing that I don't even think anybody remembers what it was. She dialed up her granddaughter's phone number the other day and she answered it. Oh, nice. And they've been talking. And Meadow's very happy and says, Aunt Cheryl's been keeping me updated, Grandma. Aunt Cheryl is the only one I trust to tell me the truth. Amen. Amen. So there again, there's that aroma and that fragrance of the Holy Spirit going out from you that they entrust you, they trust mm -hmm. you, and will go to you. I know another thing I wanted to touch on is in this time period from July of 21 through now it's March of 23 that you were water baptized. Oh, I was. And what an amazing feeling that is. Mm -hmm. And my two grandchildren were with me. Mm -hmm. And the, the granddaughter is touched by it. The grandson we're still working on it. Uh -huh, we're praying. <laughs> That's okay. And but the granddaughter was very touched on it. You know, and Aaron was glad he was there. Mm -hmm. And um, Pastor Matt says, do you have anything you want to say? And I just looked at everybody and thanked them for welcoming me here and accepting me. Mm -hmm. And then he dunked me and he brought me up and I said, I did it. And I remember hearing him say, she just said, I, I did, did it. it. <laughs> yes. And it's such a feeling you go under. Yes. And you feel different when you come up. It's, it's just water in a, tub. in a tub. And for some reason, it's amazing. It is amazing. You yeah. leave the old self. Because it's, it's a picture. You're leaving all the sin nature behind. And you're a new person in Christ. And you actually feel that. Yeah, right? you do. It, you do. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just amazing. It is amazing and that's another life-changing event because every time you you may be tempted to fall into sin or into discouragement, you go, no, I left that behind. That's the old me. This is the new me. I'm in Christ and he, he has me. I can trust him with everything. And then you pray in your prayer language and you also read the Word of God to become strengthened, become more like him. And I know that you join us on Bible study on Zoom twice yeah. a week. You're there, and we're growing and growing in the Word and of I'm God. And I'm learning so much from you. It's just, well, yeah, we're digging and digging, digging. and everybody's sharing. And um, so these things are important. God led her as she was driving by for a long time. She felt like she should come in. She came in, and then uh, as she was growing in the Lord, she felt the need for more of God and wanted to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit and received it. Took some time, some seeking, some reading scripture, and through that experience, she didn't know she'd be going through so many overwhelming circumstances in her life, but she's able to stay above that. She was water baptized according to God and being in obedience to his word. And I just see you growing and being a light to everyone around you. And I'm praying that more of your family and your friends and acquaintances will come into uh, know Jesus because of the light that you're shining. Uh, I know. Somebody last night said, do you know that you glow? You glow. <laughs> I said, Jesus. no more than you. <laughs> Jesus light is just, yeah, it's glowing and it's an aroma and it's a fragrance and it's, it's um, 
peace and you're presenting that even to those around you who are suffering. So I know um, when you sent me over your outline that you sent a little summary statement and I thought so apropos and such a lovely statement. Uh, I would like you to share that. I said, I didn't just find a church. I found a home and a family in Christ. Amen. I love that. <laughs> I love you too. That, isn't that beautiful? And I hope that you too uh, can have that same experience that Sherilyn did. That she was hurting. She lost her husband. And she came. She felt like God guided her here. And she grew in the Lord. She saw him more. Was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Was baptized in waters. Reading the word and in Bible study. And growing leaps and bounds. And is able to stay above all that's trying to push her down with all the overwhelming circumstances going in her life right now. And she just walks uh, in this godly aroma. And yeah, she shines. She shines. And you can too. Thank you Thank for you. being here with us today. <laughs> Amen.